well uh, hi i am hanish and uh, my project is watchdog timer driver for free rdos using lpc 114 blue board um well uh, first of all as everyone knows what is rdos it's a real time operating system uh, with real time scheduling policies and so on uh, now our uh, main theme of this project is free rdos why have we selected free rdos um well there are quite a couple of reasons Uh, first of all i would like to tell you that free rtos is completely free as in the source code is readily available on their website uh second would be um it's uh when we have compiled the binary image of the rto free rtos on our board it just come around 13 to 14 kb which is you know like uh, peanuts what you say and uh, thirdly it has good interprocess communication and uh, it's it's supported by a lot of boards stuff uh it also has dynamic scheduling policies um and uh, uh you know it can be configured very easily on a multiple of boards now uh stop stop well uh we got the basic as everyone knows was what what's a watchdog timer uh it's basically used to reset a system in case the system hangs uh our idea is to write a watchdog timer driver uh i emphasize the word driver because wherein we provides uh, we provide certain functions to the user wherein he can actually give the values for the watchdog it's a software programmable watchdog and it's written uh, for free rtos well i would uh, like you to have a look at this free rtos plus io library I mean, it's not a library, but uh, it's provided by the Free RTOS. Uh, this is the application part, uh, wherein the user can send some values for the watchdog um, using the IOCTL command, and uh, and we have written the driver for the peripheral. Where I, uh, this is the peripheral driver library. Um, we have written a driver such that the user can program our watchdog on the system. now i'll describe you more about the hardware um well this is the hardware board we have used this is the lpc 114 and the, the bottom one is the blue board ngx board well as you can see this part is called the target and this is the link this can be used separate, separately using a J, jtag debugger for debugging various other platforms and uh well this lpc 3114 is an arm cortex m0 processor um it has 8 kb of sram a uh, 16 kb of bootable uh, rom and 32 kb flash memory um the board has the lpc 3114 has apb that's arm peripheral bus and ahb that's arm high performance bus the apb is connected to spi i2c lcds and all um there are three clock sources the main clock source the watchdog oscillator watchdog timer oscillator clock source and the third one is internal rc oscillator all having different frequencies um we have used the watchdog uh, oscillator a watchdog timer oscillator for uh, as a clock source in our project well uh, i would like to introduce you with the software part of the project this is the LPC Expresso ID. It's an Eclipse-based ID developed by NXP, LPC Expresso, and Code Red. Um, well, uh, you know the uh, uh, it's a it's supporting the GNU C compiler. It has a built-in data sheet browser, which is very convenient for the projects. And um, uh, you know it has free and varied kind of supported tools and uh, uh, quite easy to use. Um, maybe i can say uh, equal, like kind of using keel it's comfortable using it well this is the setup of our project um, i've connected this board to the cpu and this is the id the lpc expresso uh, first of all uh, we'll import a project uh, always the projects are always kept as a zip file which are imported directly i browse um, this is my workspace this is the project and uh, yeah we include everything the simsys library the free rtos io demo the printf function and the firmware it's finished and it's being loaded into the workspace 
uh, well uh, there is actually a hierarchy we have maintained according to the principles of the free art house wherein the uh, we took a example of some other board and uh, we came to know how the driver is to be implemented because it has to be a standardized driver for any board which is using the free art house start well this is the main function of our uh, project um, wherein uh, we have created four different tasks and uh, um, there is one task which is idle task monitoring the all four tasks and uh, if uh, the task if the count if the counters are not uh, incremented in the four tasks then the idle task uh, doesn't feed the voice of timer the feeding sequence is quite unique it's 0x aa and 0 X double five, which is to be fed directly to the voice dog timer. It's a 24 bit counter in our case, um, and should be fed at regular intervals. Otherwise, the voice dog timer resets the system. Um, well, one more thing it can be used for is uh, if the task idle task doesn't get scheduled. What does this mean? Is that uh, a particular task has occupied the resource and it's not freeing it. So even in that case, the voice dog resets the system. And in our case, we have implemented a voice dog timer service or a voice dog timer manage wherein the task which wants to register, a task can actually register to the voice dog timer. Uh, as in, there can be some less critical tasks which don't want to be in a part of voice dog timer. So we have made that facility available. Also, we have written a driver for the LCD which is on board. Um, uh, well, uh, I would like to show you a demo now. If I can focus, um, we do build all projects, building all the projects. Um, uh, well, I would like you to focus here. Um, this shows the size in bytes of the binary image of the free artos, which are which we are going to port on. LPC triple one four. It's just thirteen eight thirty six. That's hardly thirteen point five KB. So well, this is the biggest reason why we have selected free Atos because given our processor of thirty two KB ROM, this is quite good. Yeah, uh, th this is what the hierarchy I was talking to you about, as given by the free Atos principles. This is the uh, SMISS version of the LPC 11XX series. It uh, actually is how do we access our peripheral registers and uh, exception vectors and all. This is the demo uh, folder which contains the actual driver of the LCD as well as the watchdog. And this is the firmware related uh, initializations and all. Uh, well, after the project is being successfully built, uh, this is how we program it. Start. We program the flash using this. Yes, I say okay. Uh, well, we flash it. Well, the flash is being written, and now we'll uh, have a look at the demo. Well, this is the standard procedure I'm following. Um, well, as you can see, there is nothing right now on the LCD. Um, that's because the tasks are running normally. Uh, we have programmed it such a way that if the switch is pressed for two seconds, then the counter doesn't increment and the idle task cannot feed the watchdog timer and it, the watchdog timer resets the system. So, well, um, I'll show the demo. I'll press the switch and we'll have a reset here. Start. I press the video, uh, press the switch for two seconds and yeah, yeah here it is watchdog plus service. The switch was pressed for two seconds. That means the task couldn't increment the count which it had. And finally, the idle task could not feed the, feed the watchdog timer. So what the watchdog timer did is it resetted the system. So well, the practical application of this is uh, suppose we have some chemical plant or a nuclear plant and a particular task, you know, it it's kind of getting hanged or it is kind of not working. So 
what we can have is we can have one task monitoring all the tasks all such critical tasks and such critical task having registered the watchdog timer if by any chance they they are not working properly the watchdog timer will kind of reset the system one more thing we have used used the warning interrupt in this project which is actually the concept of it uh, concept of it goes like uh, at a particular system takes after a particular system tricks uh, takes have been uh, occurred a warning is generated to the user stating that now the watchdog is going to reset in this so and so time so well this can have a lot of practical applications wherein you know there is not always desired the actual system should be resetted and a lot of work can be done in the actual isr of the warning interrupt the other part of our project is performance benchmarking of the artos uh, performance benchmarking is actually uh, what we have done is we have calculated the interrupt latency uh, which comes to round about 88 clock ticks we are using a 48 megahertz so you get a value of around about 1.83 microseconds what we have done to calculate this is we have take we have uh, written an isr we have registered it and we have taken a, a system tick just before the isr uh, gets executed and right when the isr gets executed gets scheduled we have taken a system tick so the latency is nothing but when the interrupt comes and when the first instruction of the isr is generated well uh, focus please focus here uh, this is the latency value what we have got for our particular free artos um, this comes out about 88 clock ticks which is 1.83 microseconds start uh, well it it was uh, really fun working with the team and uh, implementing the voice dog timer driver as well as the lcd driver and then the performance benchmarking um what's the future scope of our, our project um well in this case we have used the switch if the switch is pressed for 2 seconds um uh, so the timer doesn't fade and so similarly the voice dog timer uh, times out and resets the system we can have at the application level uh the future scope would be we can have an adc wherein we are reading particular temperature values and suppose it gets hanged or a particular value has been reached so we can uh, reset the system or generate an interrupt accordingly uh the other uh future scope uh would be using uh different clocks for the watchdog timer as in now we have used the watchdog oscillator clock we can use the internal rc or the system main clock accordingly uh well that's uh finally and that's it